All right, everyone, as you're getting to your seat, I have a few things for you to pay attention to. One is the dessert dash tables on both sides. So as you are sitting, you can stand up and go check those out. Later in the night, you'll be able to dash for those dessert items, and there'll be a bidding process. So go look at those. Next thing, silent auction is on your phone. There is a silent auction. If you take a photo of this QR code behind me, there are amazing seven night Winthrop cabin to auction to bid on and other things like 10 items so go look at that another thing to draw your guys attention to is the merch table outside if you become a monthly donor today tonight of $30 or more then you get three items that you get to take home today also everything else you can just go back there peruse and purchase so get settled and those are some things to draw your attention to It's 
everyone, just making the same announcement to draw your attention to some things. The merch table, you probably saw it. But if you become a personal donor tonight, $30 or more, you can get three items from the merch table. Other things to draw your attention to is the dessert dash tables. So you can't go actually eat that dessert right now, but you want to look at it, because later we're going to do a bidding kind of competition, and then you'll be able to get some of that. So go look at the dessert dash table. Also, draw your attention to the Jennifer Berg table. If you're going to buy or sell a home and you use Jennifer Berg, 50% of her commission will go to Absolute Ministries. Pretty crazy. Final announcement is the online silent auction. You want to QR code. I don't know if you know how to do the QR code, but if you do it, it'll show you about 10 items that you can silently bid on tonight. It ends tonight at 8. All right, so go peruse the dessert dash table, and we'll begin soon. Solid as stone, solid as stone. It's been too long since I hit my knees, but I'm down on the floor begging, please, oh help me, please. your burden is light and your yoke is easy I cast it all down and I won't leave the ground to solid as stone solid as stone solid as stone it's been a tough Cast it up down and I won't leave the 
Everyone, can we give it up for Mandy, Mandy Isinger? Though all those songs were her own written songs, so beautiful that we got to hear that. Let me draw your attention to what I've already drawn your attention to. Unless you just came in, your attention has not been drawn to this. The dessert dash table on each side, you can't go eat those yet, but you can look at them, and later you can bid on them, and then you can dash to them, and your whole table will eat them. Uh, other thing, the merch table is obviously open and people are lined up, tons of sizes. I have a few items here to highlight and advertise and model. Okay, how's this? Gender neutral. Uh, also, if you become a donor tonight for $30 or more, then you will get three merch items. Other thing to draw your attention to, online silent auction. There are 10 to 15 items. If you just scan this, this code here, it'll send you to the website where you can bid live. And that ends at 8 p.m. There are trips to Mexico. There's a Puget Sound yacht ride. And then there's other casual, more casual things, like a dinner at a few restaurants. So go look at that because all, obviously all proceeds go to help Absolute. But it ends tonight at 8, and it's just dialed in where it'll close automatically. So, those are my announcements. See you guys soon.
Okay. Can we get the in ears? I don't know if they're on. All right, everyone, a few announcements. The dessert tables on each side, you can go look at those. You can't touch them. You will be bidding on them as a table and then winning them later in the evening. So go look at those. The merch table, you saw that when you came in. If you become a donor tonight of $30 or more, then you will get three merch items that you desire to take home. But you also can go back and buy anything, and it's all donation-based toward Absolute, of course. Final thing to draw your attention to is the online silent auction. So scan this QR code with your cell phone. If your cell phone has a camera, that is. If it's a flip phone, you're just going to have to find a neighbor to help out. You'll scan that, and there is probably 15 items to start bidding on right now. There's a uh, trip to Mexico that I'm out bidding everyone by a dollar. There's other, what are, what are other items? Half Line Brewing Company, a dinner. And all the proceeds, every dollar goes straight to Absolute. So go look at that silent auction right now. And now we're going to have some more live music as you guys chat. Jesus, my life has changed. Oh, Jesus, you rescued me from. Oh, Jesus, can't thank you enough. I'll spend every day praising you up above. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, oh, Jesus, yeah. Cause I want to Jesus, I've been praying. Oh, Jesus, been crying out to you. Oh, Jesus, been a little down and out. And I need you now, Lord, I need you now. Come right now, oh, Jesus. Jesus, oh, Jesus, yeah.
All right, everyone, we're gearing to begin in about eight minutes. Let me draw your attention to what's going on in the room right now. The desserts on each side of the table, or excuse me, room, will be able for your table to bid on later in the evening. So you can go look at those. You can't touch them or you'll be disqualified. That is actually a joke. I don't know about disqualification. Um, the merch table, you can go donate to Absolute and get some merch items and then Advertise that and communicate that around the places that you live. Also, the silent auction. Probably the most important thing for you to do right now is bid on the silent auction, and all of the money will go to Absolute, but you will get an item if you win. Uh, there are many different items from a boat cruise to the Puget Sound to Airbnb stays and the like. So you want to take your phone out, and when the QR code pops up, you hold your phone in front of it, and then you click the website. Then you hit bid. So can we get that QR code if it's near the... QR code is right there. Once you see a website, it'll be yellow on your phone. You click the website. Then you hit... Uh, you can hit bid items and it'll show you all the items. Very important. Silent auction. All right, let's have a little bit more live music from our musicians.
And I need you now, Lord, I need you now. Come right now, oh Jesus, Jesus, oh Jesus, yeah, yeah. And one day the storm went away when I called on your name, and you came and cleared it all away. And Jesus, I know I'm. It's all about you, Jesus, Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus, Jesus. All right, unless you have already started eating, you have permission to eat. And it's kind of a team building exercise with you and your table, what you're gonna do and who's gonna grab what. But you can begin eating. We're gonna start soon. We're glad that you guys are here to the annual Absolute Fundraiser. We're gonna hear a little bit more live music from Mandy. And you can go check out the dessert table, the merch table, and the silent auction. And we'll begin soon. But yeah, you can start eating. shows up and turns a plant around. Oh, but there's all around here. Isn't that what it's about? Oh, walking it out, walking it out. Count it all joy and suffering. Praise his name to the chatterman. Doesn't matter what he's gonna face. All that matters is what he chases. Who's calling you now? What 
All right, everyone, I hope you're eating. If you haven't started eating, you can open up all that is your charcuterie board in front of you. And we are beginning in five minutes. We're just giving time for everyone that's registering right now. If I haven't introduced myself to you yet, I'm Chris Knight. I'll be your MC for the evening. So just drawing your attention to things, the dessert table, the merch table, and then the silent auction is on the QR code as it's there. Right now it's live, so you could be getting a trip to Mexico for way cheaper than you normally would, and all the money goes to Absolute right now. And as you bid, it's you'll see it live. And then it closes at 8 p.m. So please pull that open and just look at, there's paintings, there's boat outings, there's a, I don't know if it's an Airbnb per se, but there's a, a cabin outing. So pull that open. Every dollar that you bid, obviously you don't, pay unless you win and then that'll go to absolute and then you will get that item so a little bit more live music and we'll begin shortly
All right, everyone, if I could have your attention, can we thank Mandy for her live music that she actually wrote all of that? I asked if we can find her music live, and she said not necessarily yet. But all of that was fantastic that she's written, and uh, you'll hear from her later in the evening, too. So we are now um, kicking off the evening, and I'm glad you're with us. I just want to draw your attention to... Usually when someone's public speaking, you don't want to look at your phone. That's kind of like a, you know, known. Uh, unless you're at church, you're like, oh, it's my Bible app. But everyone's like, no, it's IG. Well, tonight you can have your phones open because there's live bidding going on for, let's take a peek, the brand new 5x8 Eagle utility trailer with ramp. It's currently at 970. I don't know if you can go to 980. There might be, is there like a $20 jump? 10. So you could go to 980. There's other things, horse trail ride for two. You guys, horse trail. We have newly married people in the room. Horse trail ride for two. Every dollar goes to help Absolute. So you, six day, seven night, Winthrop cabin, it's currently $500. So who's gonna dive into that? You can have your, your phone out the whole night. How do you look at these things that I'm looking at? You scan the QR code in front of me or on the screen. You click the button. If you have a flip phone, it's not gonna work. You gotta use your neighbor's phone. Okay, you gotta have an iPhone. All right, well, the evening is getting started and I'm actually gonna invite up my new good friend, Stan. Stan, can you come up here?
Stanley. So a few things about Stanley. He is a graduate of Absolute in 2017. <laughs> which means a lot. I get to walk through two uh, members of Absolute right now. We meet up often and I'm in their lives. And I see everything that, that God has them go through. So Stanley, amazing, graduating. That's been six years now. Yes. Stanley now works at Auburn Riverside High School. Go Ravens. Okay. I went to Auburn High, but I'll jump on board with that. Go Ravens. And here is what God just did in Stanley's life. There is an award that goes out for employee of the year for the whole district of Auburn. And in 2023, Stanley was your recipient of that award. Stanley is a kindergarten teacher. Is that right, Stanley? Kindergarten teacher? Kind no, he is not. He's a custodian. He's a custodian. <laughs> that is amazing. I mean, I went to an Auburn uh, elementary school, middle school, high school. There's four high schools. There's you know eight or seven middle schools, whatever it is. So many elementary schools. What an honor. And that God would bring you through Absolute. Now you're an impact to your city. So you were at Absolute. What does absolute mean to you? Absolute to me. At one point in my life, you know, uh, I was in a very dark place. You know, I've been in and out of prison and whatnot. And, uh, you know, uh, I entered a inpatient program in the Tri-Cities in 2014. And, you know, absolute ministry, this fella come here, and his, his name is Kevin Burke. And I know God sent him for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. And I know the Lord sent him for me. And, and, and you know, uh, I ended up going to absolute. And I would have never thought in a million years I'd be where I am today. And, and I, I, I give glory. I give glory to, to Christ Jesus. I give glory to Christ Jesus. And absolute is so valuable to me. This is why I'm here today. Because, you know what I'm saying, the Cameron, man, if I ain't said nothing to you, I just want to say this to you, brother. I know, man, you was talking to me when you came here, man, to the Tri-Cities. I knew you was. God spoke to you, through to you, to me. Thank you. And now I want to pray. Can I pray? Yeah. Yes. Could y'all bow y'all hands with me? Father God, uh, first of all, foremost, Lord God, hallelujah. Thank you for this day, Lord God. Father God, I ask in the mighty name of Jesus that every man, every woman, every child that's in this place right now, Father God, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you go before them, Lord God, that you be a light and a lamp unto their feet, Father God. Father God, I ask in the name of Jesus, Lord God, for a hedge of protection, Lord God, day in and day out, Lord God. For Father God, there's none like unto you, Lord you are almighty. You are our rock. You are our redeemer. You are our strong tower. Oh, hallelujah, God. We give you the honor and the glory and the praise. Amen and amen and amen. We could just ask you to give and go home, and that would be an amazing evening. Well, if you just slipped in, you can begin the charcuterie board. If you don't know folks at your table, you're now sharing a meal with them. And so that's going to be a bonding uh, opportunity for you. Uh, it's actually an amazing dinner, so dive into that as the evening's going on. My name's Chris Knight, and I am an Auburn native. Uh, I was born not in Auburn. I was born in Tacoma, but moved here when I was three and was raised here. Went to Lee Hill Elementary, Rainier Middle School and Auburn High School, go Trojans. Although now, maybe go Riverside, my kids will go to Riverside. So, employees of the year coming from Riverside. Why is absolute important to me? My name is Chris Knight, like I said, and I'm a pastor of a church in Auburn called Stone Church, kind of in North Auburn. And I didn't get saved. I mean, the Lord is always pursuing me like he is with everyone's journey. But it wasn't until college when I was actually outside of Auburn, I was at Washington State University, when the Lord pursued me and saved me. And then 10 years later, he called my wife and I back to Auburn to help start a church. And coming back to your hometown, you're, we were in California and we were aware of how broken the city is that we were living in. But when we came back to Auburn, 
it was so aware to me as an adult, man, this is the place I grew up, but it is so broken. And sadly, my wife's only uh, brother and my brother-in-law fell into the lifestyle of drugs and alcohol in Auburn and lost his job and ended up homeless. And he, he didn't feel like the, the young man that we knew. And it's just right in front of our eyes. And this one story of many of why our city's broken and amazing miracle. Seven months ago, the Lord redeemed my brother-in-law, John. He's now in an amazing uh, recovery called, uh, what's it called? Gethsemane in Shelton. And so the Lord used many people, but this Gethsemane Ministries is an amazing ministry. It's just like Absolute. He used it to just redeem him. Well, how we cross paths um, our church with Absolute is really Michael Bowles, who's on staff with Absolute. And he's a member and leader at our church. And quickly, right away, I was like, all right, let's get behind this. This sounds amazing. And once uh, some of the, we live in, our church is in Auburn, so the men's campus is in here in Auburn. There's obviously campuses in different states now, but the ladies' campus isn't near Auburn. So Absolute Men start coming to Stone, and we start realizing, man, God is all over Absolute Ministries. So now I think our church uh, mentors like seven or eight of the guys. My wife and I have... Um, a few of the guys, Jordan and Josh, big shout out to you guys, most handsome two men in the room, Jordan and Josh. They're in our life group. Uh, that didn't need an applause. That was a that was a joke, not like an offensive joke. Okay. <laughs> I really have pigeonholed myself here. Absolute. My wife and I can't explain like how important absolute is to us because so we lead the church and we want to see the Lord redeem people, but at absolute like everyone they're they're checking themselves in saying I'm broken I need help. And it's through that humility and the absolute program, the curriculum the guys go through is intense and fantastic, mainly written by Cameron. Pick up one of those books and read it and it'll change your life. But we just love that we get to be a part of their journey. And then if you walk into Stone Church, uh, you will see the, our church's culture has been changed because of the, the culture of absolute. It's authenticity. It's not fake. It's here's who I am and Jesus is changing me. Jesus is the hero. So we're all on board for absolute. Our church is all on board for absolute. I'm glad that you're here tonight. I don't know if you're connected with Absolute really, really closely, like I am, or if you're like, hey, I got invited, I heard charcuterie board, didn't even know what that was, so I thought I'd come. <laughs> um, I'm glad you're here. You're gonna learn a lot tonight. Stan, I, let's have him preach like 20 minutes. That was just fantastic. Um, that's gonna be the theme of the evening. And so as we dive in, I actually wanted to draw attention to people that serve in this area in the form of civic leaders. First responders, so could those stand, if that's you in the room, if you're a law enforcement, EMT, firefighter, military, and can we honor these individuals? Can you please stand if that's you for serving? Amazing, amazing. Yeah, like I said, I'm excited for tonight, and the theme is how to live. Everyone that is a member of Absolute um, is giving tools. They're given relationships, and they're given new patterns following Jesus. It's ultimately a trajectory to get them back onto life with Jesus. Cameron was telling me this over the phone. If you take away addiction and you don't give anything, there's just this hollowness, and it's going to go somewhere else. But if you take away addiction and you give Jesus Christ and then you give tools for how to live, you get what we got with Stan, employee of the year. Man. So how to live is the theme of the evening. I'm going to draw your attention to the three announcements I've said a lot. And the third one's the most important. The merch table, grab things on your way out. I mean, so when I wear my absolute sweatshirt or t-shirt, you'll get questions. You can wear it and, and advertise, hey, this is a recovery option for maybe someone's neighbor, friend, cousin, whatever it might be. There's a lot of... Um, a lot of hurting people that could connect with it. So grab merch, and if you begin giving tonight for $30 or more monthly, then you can snag three items from the merch table. We have fishnet hats, okay, very, very trendy and stylish. They look kind of goofy on me, I've tried, but um, maybe not me. How to live absolute mugs, sip your coffee and tea. And then these shirts are sweet. So this one's a ladies one. It's kind of like a t-shirt, kind of like a sweatshirt. You'll have to feel it to, you know, understand what I'm saying. There's a ladies one. Here's a gentleman's one or whatever you, it is that colors that you'd like. So the merch table, grab that on your way out in rep. Absolute.
You guys have awesome stuff tonight. That's great. Uh, second thing is the desserts. Later tonight, you're going to be able to bid on those desserts. So don't eat too much charcuterie board, but hopefully you can bid on like three pies for your table. And then you guys are all bonding over those pies. <laughs> Last thing, can we get the QR code? Like I said earlier, this QR code, go ahead and start bidding. And don't be too rude, but you can have your phone out all night and outbid people. And throughout the evening, maybe check if you still have the trailer or if someone's outbid you and you know who they are and you're going to text them and be like, yo, stop bidding. I want the trailer. And you guys can work it out together. But once again, keep your attention the whole time, okay, up here. All right, now I'm going to introduce Detective Sergeant Jeremy Hedrick, who serves our, <laughs> serves our community. Thank you, Chris. Good evening. Stanley, I'm a Raven too, so go Ravens. So, a uh, little bit about myself. I'm a detective sergeant with the Puyallup Police Department. Uh, I will give a disclaimer right off the bat. I am here on my own. I'm not representing the city or the agency. I have the Mayor of Puyallup here in front of me, so I'm not going to get myself in trouble tonight. <laughs> uh, I've been a cop for 15 years. I've worked in King County. I've worked in Pierce County. I've worked major crimes. I've worked patrol. Uh, I've been a detective. All that to say, I have a lot of experience dealing with people who are dealing with addiction uh, every day. And I kind of thought about that earlier today. How many people have I dealt with who are struggling with addiction? And I would say probably thousands, and I'm dealing with them uh, a lot of times uh, at rock bottom. So this will be a little bit of a downer. I promise at the end I'll try and bring it back up. So the majority of crime that we see is driven by addiction. And I'll say that again because I think that's very powerful and, and it's missed. The majority of crime that I deal with is driven by addiction. Whether that's alcohol, whether that's meth, whether it's heroin, heroin, whether it's fentanyl, it is driving crime, which is a huge societal issue for us right now. I'm going to focus on fentanyl a little bit. Uh, that is what we're seeing the most of right now, and it is a horrible, dangerous, addictive drug. I thought heroin was as bad as it could get. Yep, fentanyl is giving it a run for its money. That's all we're seeing now. Our borders are being flooded with fentanyl coming up from Mexico and just absolutely destroying our communities right now. I read a statistic which blew me away yesterday. The DEA put a report out. Fentanyl pills, if you've never seen them, hopefully you haven't. They're small blue pills imprinted to look like Percocet. and They're actually just pure fentanyl and pure poison. Six out of 10 of those pills that they're testing have a potentially lethal dose of fentanyl. So when someone is using that, when they're smoking that pill, the odds are that they will overdose, which blows me away. And that shows how powerful that is, how powerful that addiction is to every time it's like playing Russian roulette. And that's, that's mind blowing to me that chances are you will overdose when you're using that. Another thing I was talking to Cameron about that um, really surprised him, so I figured I'd include it. We see so many overdoses in Puyallup due to fentanyl right now that officers no longer receive life-saving awards for using Narcan to save them because it is so prevalent and it happens almost daily in Puyallup. So Narcan, if you aren't aware, is a nasal spray. It's an uh, opioid blocker. So someone who's overdosing, that can save their life. So it used to be in Puyallup, and I'm on our awards committee, and we would give an award to an officer who would save someone overdosing. Those days are gone because our award ceremonies would be 10 hours long probably with all the officers getting awarded for Narcan saves. We're also seeing a lot of um, drug addicts on the street who are carrying Narcan, and they're saving each other as they overdose. So I feel like the statistics are very much skewed as far as how many overdoses are actually happening. I think it's much higher than most people realize. So when we talk about how addiction drives crime, uh, I'm going to 
tell the story I think a lot of you are already aware of. Someone gets hooked on any, any narcotic, but in this case, opiates. Uh, when you get into that kind of addiction and deep into it, you're not keeping a job anymore. You're, you're not doing your hobbies you used to enjoy. Uh, everything changes. You're driven solely to try and get more fentanyl or more opiates to feed your habit. In doing that, without having a job or funds coming in to pay for that very expensive habit, you have to resort to anything you can, whether it's stealing from family members, um, friends, ultimately going out and committing crimes in order to get money to feed your habit. And that's where I come in. And I looked over several cases from the last week in Puyallup, and I tried to be very intentional about looking at them from an addiction standpoint these different crimes, is there a, a connection like I'm talking about with the majority of them? And yes, absolutely there is. So I'll give you a, a few quick examples. I'm not gonna use names, but uh, I looked at some domestic violence cases that were all driven by alcohol addiction. I looked at commercial burglaries, residential burglaries, armed robberies, strong armed robberies, all had a opiate angle. The people who were arrested had opiates on them and they obviously were dealing with addiction and that's how they were trying to feed that habit. Uh, we also saw DUIs with the alcohol component, shoplifts, organized retail thefts, motor vehicle thefts. It goes on and on and on. And there is an addiction component to the majority of each of those. So you can imagine if we were able to rein addiction in, how much we could reduce crime in our community. And it's mind boggling to think about. A lot of times when we are talking to a, a suspect who's arrested for one of these crimes, they'll openly tell us about their addiction. They're not proud of it, but they, they know that that is the reason they're committing the crime. So when we talk to them, they will openly say, yes, I committed this crime because I'm addicted to opiates. Yes, I committed this crime because I'm addicted to methamphetamine. And that is the reason they're committing the crime. This is not like the movie, The Thomas Crown Affair, where it's a master criminal stealing artwork. You know, these are people who are very much driven by their addiction to quickly get that fix. And I, another example came up just yesterday of that. So I had one of my detectives send in a report. It was a check fraud case, very basic. Uh, but the long and short of it was a suspect who had done burglaries and vehicle prowls and would steal checks whenever he could was at the bank cashing the checks under his own name. So it is not a hard crime to crack, and there's not like magnifying glasses out looking for clues. It, he's on video doing this under his own name. So my detective went and arrested him, and he asked him, why would you do this when, I mean, it's so obvious that it's you. And he said, I'm addicted to methamphetamine. I knew I'd get caught, but I needed money now. And so we see that time and time again. When we talk about prolific offenders, I can't think of a single property crime prolific offender who is not dealing with addiction. So when I'm talking about a prolific offender, I'm talking about someone who is dealing with addiction and who is out committing multiple felonies every single day. And there are many of these people. And that's what they have to do, as I mentioned. So you can imagine the overall impact if even one of these prolific offenders ended up going to rehab, ended up going to absolute, and is no longer out there committing multiple felonies a day in our local community. You will, we've seen it before. When someone like that goes into rehab and is successful, when someone like that even goes to jail and then ultimately rehab, you will, we can see the crime statistics drop off. It's amazing. And I don't think it's just crime either. I think some of our other biggest societal issues are driven by addiction. When you talk about homelessness, when you talk about mental health, all of that, uh, all three of those, crime, mental health, and homelessness are all driven by addiction. They all go hand in hand in my experience. We see local organizations kind of throwing money at the problem, but it's not getting better. And that's where I have personally seen a ministry like Absolute that works. And just even tonight, talking to some of the folks who have been through the program and over the years talking to folks, I haven't seen anything like it in my career anywhere else. So this is the program that works. And when we wanna talk about lowering crime, 
homelessness, mental health issues. This is step one right here. Thank you. So I'm going to tell you one more downer story before I bring it back to a little bit of hope. Uh, this, again, happened earlier this week, but I think it is representative of, of what we see so often right now. Uh, there's a, a gentleman named Mark. I won't tell you his last name. He is what we call a frequent flyer in the city of Puyallup. So a frequent flyer is someone who is on a first-name basis with our police officers. Uh, you can be a cop for a week in Puyallup, and you will be very familiar with Mark. On Tuesday, it was Mark's 49th birthday, and he may have not even realized it was his birthday, uh, but he turned 49 on Tuesday. On Wednesday, we responded to a call of a uh, unwanted person outside of the Ace Hardware in downtown Puyallup. When patrol officers got there, they found Mark deceased. So he uh, had tinfoil, burnt tinfoil on his lap. He had been smoking fentanyl. And they tried Narcan, they tried CPR, but they couldn't bring him back. So you think about one case like that and just the tragedy of that. And I can't help but think, had Mark been in the absolute program, would he, he be alive today? And how many of those cases happen every single day and just missed opportunities? And you know what? I question myself, could I have done more? And I just, you know, I. I believe it was Joseph Stalin who said, one death is a tragedy and a million is a statistic. I think that's a great example of that. If you look at Mark, who died on Wednesday, that is a tragedy. Last year in Washington, 2,432 people overdosed and died. That's a statistic. You can't even wrap your mind around that. The damage that has done to families and friends, I, I can't even begin to imagine. So that's where Cameron told me I need to bring it back to hope. And a little positive, you know, people are bidding on stuff. I better make it more uplifting. Uh, so after two years of Washington having legalized all drugs, if you were not aware of that, we've been operating under that for two years now. Uh, in July, they're finally bringing back a law to criminalize hard drugs, which gives us an opportunity to get, yeah, I clap for that. And that is going to create what I think is needed so much in our community here. It is going to give law enforcement the teeth needed to force people into rehab who don't want to go. And then at the end of that, that's where Absolute comes in. And that is where I have seen the absolute power of Absolute Ministries. At that point, when people are humbled, but they're clean, and now they just need that structure, and they need those pillars that Cameron talks about, that's where Absolute comes in, and that's where I've seen it work. And I believe that is the first step in um, helping these people, reducing crime, reducing homelessness, all the things I talked about. Uh, that's where Absolute comes in. So Absolute gives me hope. It's the best program I've seen in my 15 years as a cop. I haven't seen anything even close to it as far as success rate. And so I... Truly appreciate all of you being here supporting this ministry. I think it's very important. And quite honestly, based on my story I told you, it is a life or death type of struggle right now. So thank you for being here. God bless you. Uh, have a good night. Amazing. Can you go back to that last slide of him and all of his photos? I didn't know they had stormtroopers in Puyallup. Uh, certainly, so that's really going to be helpful. I didn't know how that joke would land. It didn't really. That was embarrassing. Um, so pulling your attention back to the uh, bidding is what word is coming to my mind. Auction. Thank you. This is the normal word for it. Every dollar that is, that is spent tonight on the auction goes straight to Absolute. And Absolute has so many... Needs and resources that dollars go to. So, yeah, it's, it, it is kind of a joke to hate pull it open, but really it is. If you're generous, every dollar is going to things. And the horseback ride for two is still at $110. So if you want to take you know, the opportunity to bid on that, that's, this is freebie right there. If you're newly married or if you've been married for a while. All right. A lot of good things on the auction to bid on. I'm now going to transition us over and invite up Tiffany and Carolyn. Uh, Tiffany... 
Betancourt is the VP of Pacific Northwest Ops. And Carolyn is the women's campus staff member. You got a mic? Do you need a Got mic? one. All right. Got mics. Hey, thank you, Chris. Man, everybody, you guys look awesome. Thanks yeah. for coming out here tonight. Yeah, we're so happy that you guys are here all together with us tonight. Yeah. I hope that you guys are ready to eat some delicious desserts. I hope that you guys were all able to take a look at the desserts on each side of the room because we're about to get ready to start bidding on our dessert dash tonight. Yep. So Tiffany, do you want to tell them a little bit about how it works? I do. Okay. So on every table, you'll have a white envelope and a bidding sheet. On that bidding sheet, you guys will pass it around the table, put your name and the amount you bid. So if your name's Carolyn and you want to bid a million dollars, you put it here and here. Then every table will pick a table captain. That person will add these totals up at the bottom of the sheet, and that's the person who's going to run for the dessert. That's right. So whoever bids the most, when Carolyn and I come back up here, they're the ones who get to run first. Whoever bids the second most gets to go second and onward and onward and onward. So this is how you're gonna get your dessert. So if you see something you like over there, make put sure it on you the sheet. bid high. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have to bid high. That is the key to the game. So I hope that you guys are ready to have some fun. Who is ready to have some fun tonight? Woo! 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 All right. So fill these out, put it in the white envelope and hold your envelope and one of the ladies will come and get it from you. Yeah. So if you guys could just fill this out now, that would be great. Yes, right now. All right, you guys. All right, well, I'm super excited. Um, this is my favorite part of the night. We're gonna have um, Renee complete Absolute Ministry. So can Renee and any family or any loved ones, anyone who calls Renee friends come up here? Oh, sorry, here's your... Bid high, honey. All right, so... Everybody, this is Renee, and this is Harlan. You want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> so, um, this is Kylie and Carolyn, so they're the staff at the women's campus. And we have got to walk alongside of Renee um, while she's been in Absolute and watch her go through an amazing transformation, not only for herself, but with her daughter. So we've got to watch Renee be grafted into the local church and Harlan. And so it's been really special and amazing. And so we're gonna hear a little bit from Renee. Is everybody ready? Yeah. All right. All right, so Renee, can you tell us um, about your life before um, you got clean in rehab? Yeah, um, so my, my childhood growing up was really good, uh, and I was in, you know, in a loving family. Uh, I got married um, at a young age, and it just didn't work out. I uh, was in the wrong place at the wrong time, and was introduced to meth, and uh, first time using it was IV use, and so I was hooked right away. And uh, uh, for it was a 10-year long battle, uh, a 10-year long battle in, uh, <clears throat> just uh, lost and hopeless, uh, in abusive uh, relationships, uh, one of which I got pregnant and he begged me to get an abortion. And uh, it, was, it was the hardest thing to do. And not a year later, I ended up being pregnant again. And <laughs> And this is, and here she is. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, it was, it was 
absolutely hard to uh, get to where I'm at today, uh, in and out of inpatient treatments and detoxes, and I, uh, it took one last step and uh, went to Adult and Teen Challenge for uh, and completed there, and I came to Absolute afterwards. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, yeah. So I'd like to share just a little bit, Renee. So, <laughs> nothing embarrassing. Oh. So when Renee came in, um, and she, she had supervised visits with Harlan. So she was only getting to see Harlan for a couple hours under supervision. And it was just amazing, like, to watch her um, become a mom, because when she came, she didn't have a bank account, she didn't have a job, she didn't have a vehicle, she didn't have any of the things that you would need, you know, to care for a child and to be successful. And so, her supervised visits went from supervi supervised to unsupervised, and then she started getting overnights, and so she's gonna get her full time for the summer. So it's been fun to watch, yeah. It's been fun to watch Renee not only, um, like I say, get grafted in the church, serve in church, but it has been fun to watch Harlan uh, be in Christmas concerts, kids church, love Jesus, and say things. And, and Harlan runs the show over at the women's campus. <laughs> we call her the women's director. Yeah, and um, it's really emotional and amazing to get to watch. And it's been amazing to see the support that you've had from your family and your mom. Uh, Renee said to me, because her mom has had Harlan, my mom finally gets to be grandma and I get to be mom. And so I think that's amazing. <laughs> Renee, you want to share just some reasons why you chose to come to Absolute? Yeah, um, I chose to come to Absolute because I uh, needed more uh, stability and uh, guidance with Thank God, yes. <laughs> Number one. Um, uh, I, I needed financial stability, and I think that's one of the biggest uh, things for me is I, I was not responsible at all in, at any point in my life with my money. And uh, now I have a car. I have a great credit score. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She does. <laughs> You bought your car with cash, too. That's different than just having a car, right? That's a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She has a full-time job. Yeah. It's hard to be up here and speak in front of everybody. It's You're doing awesome, special. though. You're doing Thank awesome. You. Um, yeah, so, Harlan, would you like to say anything? Is she sure does? Yeah. Let's see. Let's Dangerous. <laughs> Jesus cared for us. Yeah. Can we get the slide on screen that talks about all the services that Absolute provides? Because I want to ask yeah. you, Renee, when you look at all the things, you think about if they can find that, when you think about all the different areas, right? And you talked about the financial component, mm -hmm. um, but you look behind you here and you've got family, right? Yes. Both blood and new church family. Right, And that's incredibly important and powerful. And one of the things that Absolute does with intentionality is setting people up for not just success today, right, but a sustainable path forward. And what has Absolute um, done for you that has helped pay, pave tomorrow's path, right? Um. I think the um, how to relationship and uh, yeah and how to um, be transparent with the people around me and be vulnerable and uh, in the absolute workbook it helps me to guide me to 
do those things and uh, express how I feel and um, work through those things. Mm -hmm. And uh, Absolute has given me those tools to do so. And uh, and uh, it's it'll help me to grow to maybe mentor somebody else someday. Who, yeah. You know. Yep. Yeah. That's right. Can we give her a hand? Yeah. So one of the things that goes on at Absolute Ministries, individuals get an opportunity when they come in to sign up for our match savings program. And what that is, they can pay an extra $100 a month on their tuition. And at the end, when they complete, not only do they get that $100 back, but then Absolute matches it upon completion. And so we've got a check to present to you today. And you already got the real thing, I think a couple days ago. Uh, you won't take that one to the bank. But, so it's our pleasure to present you with your original 2400 and then a match of 2400 yep give her a hand and we've got your completion certificate right here so you have officially completed absolute and and one other thing and this is a big deal also um, should Renee continue in her education um, we have a partnership with Faith International University, and they've got a booth out here. I think their president's here tonight, Dr. Adams. And so by way of completing Absolute, going through the workbook, she gets 45 credits towards her undergrad. Wow. Yeah, that's a big deal. Congratulations. Can we give her a hand? All right, we're going to get a picture. Ready? Awesome. All right. You guys can have a seat. Thank you. Oh, there's another picture. Hold on. Nice work. Thank you. I think of what Detective Jeremy Hedrick said about one's, one person is a story, and then many people is a statistic. And this story, like I tried to whisper something to my wife, and she's like, no, I'm crying and listening. Like this story, we can see, and we can hear the details, and it's, we can see that, you know, what is she, four or five, or 15? You know, we can see her daughter. But what Absolute gets to do is then start multiplying that into statistics. And we get, I get to walk alongside some of the men and walk through that same book that she described. And it's rigorous. This isn't just like a vague thing that's like, oh, you know, memorize five Bible verses and you graduate. Like, it's very, very detailed. And there's steps. It's like, unless you do this step, unless you get this savings account, you're not moving on. But what, what God's done through, through Absolute and through Cameron's work with it and everyone else is created... The ability for stories like this to now turn into statistics, where in these cities these people are living, it's, there's now many people that their lives are being changed and transformed. So that's a beautiful thing to look at and know that it's happening in more and more lives. Well, now I'll hand it over to Michael Bowles, who is the regional director, and Tiffany again. Awesome. Well, at this point, we uh, are going to have yeah. who members hasn't, come up. Who hasn't turned in your dessert dash, babe? Lift that up. Okay. Ladies, can you grab these? Fantastic. Got to get dessert. And we're going to have um, some pre-selected members come up and a mentor. So if that is you, come on up to the stage. We got Joe Wilson, Alyssa, Shannon, Josh, Kendall, Awesome. 
All right, so we're going to ask them a series of questions, and we're going to start with Joe. Joe, tell us a little bit about your life um, before you went to rehab and came to Absolute. I had serious major depression and anxiety. I had a whole team of people trying to help me, a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a doctor, a personal trainer at a gym, and none of them knew what to do with me besides prescribe me benzodiazepines like Xanax and Klonopin, which I was did to do for five years. I was very hopeless, crying every day for no reason, for hours at a time, not gonna hold a job. I went through bankruptcy because of that. It was just a mess. I was in and out of psych ward, suicidal. My family threw money at me and they didn't know what to do anymore. Thanks for sharing, Joe. Um, how long have you been in Absolute? Just over two years. Just over two years. That's worth giving him some applause. Um, Joe is not only a member here, but I consider him one of my friends. Um, when he first came in, he was at our Lake Taps campus. Uh, he went to Stone Church. He was a part of our uh, life group, community group, and was serving and it's been such a joy to just see uh, you be open to what God's doing in your life and just being open to a new way to live. Um, how long or how have you grown? I know you've kind of alluded to it already, but um, what are some significant things that you've seen in your own life since being an absolute uh, in areas of growth? Well, I'm holding a job, working full time that I enjoy. Um, I'm getting ready to buy a car. I'm serving at the church, which I enjoy too. I thought I was just going to serve because I had to, and I actually enjoy it. That's <laughs> awesome. And how long have you worked at your current job? Mm, like seven or eight months. It's since, amazing. Almost since I've been to Idaho. So Amazing. Awesome. Thanks for sharing, Joe. Need this. Oh, there you there go. go. Okay. Alyssa, um, how long have you been in Absolute? Uh, August will be a year, so 10 months. Yeah. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about what your life was like before Absolute? Sure. Uh, it was my 21st birthday. Uh, I went out seemingly just to celebrate with my sister, um, and she couldn't make it, so that's kind of the craziest part. But um, and I wasn't going to go, but I went out to have some drinks, and that's when I encountered methamphetamine, and we became addicted and didn't put it down for 19 years. Yeah. Um, also, uh, I had four children in my addiction and also lost custody of them, uh, which is pretty much the, the most and hardest thing I've ever had to go through in my rock bottom. Yeah. How many programs have you been through? Sure. I've been to nine different inpatient treatment centers. Um, countless outpatients, um, mental health hospitals. Um, I've been to Oxford Housing. I've, I've done every single thing you guys can imagine. Methadone clinic, just different things to try to um, fix and stop my addiction. Everything. So you said you lost all four of your children. Yeah. Can you share with us what your relationship dynamic looks like with them now? Sure. Uh, I was a in a very domestic violent relationship with their father, um, exploitation as well. Um, so I never was angry at God for losing them. I was definitely angry at myself. So that really spiraled me down. I started IV using when that happened. Um, and that's when the criminality came in. Everything the officer said was my life. I got 18 arrests, I'm a felon. Um, I just lost control. So. Um, now, though, um, it, it, God is restoring our relationship. They're back in my life, yeah. Amazing. And Alyssa, you are not here alone. No. You have your mentor, Shannon, who's here with you. Shannon, can you tell us um, why you started mentoring and what that has looked like? so far sure and just remember you gave me the mic yeah. so yeah. 
So about um, 10 or 12 years ago, the Lord started to talk to me about a couple things. One of them was to be intentional in my relationships with women, with other women. The other was mentoring. I was all in on the intentional relationships. The mentoring, I really didn't want any part of because it seemed really terrifying to me. Um, when I heard the word mentor, I thought of someone who was super smart, had everything together, could answer all the questions, probably could do like multiplying fractions. Which she can. No, she I, can't, I can't multiply fractions. No, no. So I kind of just pushed that aside, but as the Lord will do, he continued to bring that topic to me over and over and over again. And about a year ago, um, one of our pastors, Pastor Jeanette Bryant, came to me and asked if I would pray about being a mentor with Absolute. What are you going to say? No, I'm not going to pray about that. So I said yes, of course, and I did, hoping that, you know, maybe God would tell me that this was just a great idea and I was supposed to tell one of my friends to do this. But he didn't. So I agreed to meet with Kylie, who is over the women's program, uh, mentoring program. Yes, she's fabulous. So she brought Ken with her. So I kind of feel like I was double teamed. And immediately, within like five minutes, I was in love with both of them and would have probably agreed to do anything they asked. Um, and then it was when Kylie said to me, don't think of it as mentoring, think of it as being an intentional friend. And then I knew, okay, the Lord's bringing this around. He'll help me, he'll fill in any lack that I have. And of course he has. And so then I met Alyssa a few weeks later after I finished all my paperwork. And as we sat down together, um, it was just like we bonded immediately. And now, nine months later, um, She's not just a friend, she's a member of our family. And um, you know, she's like another daughter to us. And I have a front row seat to see what God is doing, how he's redeeming and restoring her life. And it's, it's amazing. amazing. And she's so dedicated. She's absolutely transparent and vulnerable. She is a, has such a servant's heart. She is always looking for ways to help or encourage someone. So I would say to all of you, if you ever have the opportunity to be a mentor with absolute men or women, to absolutely do that. And also to support this program any way that you can. And to please pray for the staff members and the men and women that are in the program because it is, it is worth your time and your money. Amazing. Shannon, uh, Shannon, thank you so much for sharing. Alyssa, I got one more question for you. For those of you who aren't a familiar with Absolute and what exactly we do, there is a workbook that all of our members walk through, and it takes them through four seasons. And in each season, there's, there's different goals. Holistically, we look at every single member, uh, and we're setting goals for emotional health, finances, vocation, transportation, the list goes on. One of the things is finding a mentor. And uh, Shannon, thank you again for mentoring and just saying yes to that. Um, out of all the things that we provide, you, you have a slide behind us um, that says safe and stable housing, job placement, transportation, financial framework, guidance, how and where to relationship, DOC, legal assistance. Alyssa, um, there's obviously more than I'm saying, uh, but what are some of the things that have been really valuable to you since you've been here at Absolute? Sure. Um, I did a really good job at uh, wrecking my life. I mean, in every aspect and everything you can imagine. Um, the first season, they, they look at the wreckage with me, and they look at and we put it on paper, and we look at the damage, and we look at the, the solutions. And so that's season one. I'm in season two now where the wreckage is almost, you know, it's behind me. We're rebuilding. And um, so just um, mentor, that's my favorite, hands down. Um, but all of them are so important, you guys, and, and they're really, truly working and changing and rebuilding my life. Thanks, Alyssa. Josh. Awesome. Josh, how's it going? Great. <laughs> Thanks for being up here. Of course. Uh, Josh, can you tell us a little bit about what your life looked like before rehab, before you came into Absolute? Yes. And, uh, you know, I can really identify with the story that the detective sergeant shared. Um, that actually describes my life to a T prior to coming to Absolute Ministries. 
Um, you would have seen me walking around on the streets, high on crystal meth. I was one of those people that was committing retail theft multiple times a day, every day to support my habit. I was homeless. I didn't sleep. If I did sleep, I slept at the cemetery in Puyallup off of 94th for a few hours here and there um, in a sleeping bag that I stole, and I would just leave it there and move on to the next one. And I was always, my life had, be, had been reduced to um, me just always being on my next uh, journey to the next place I was going to steal from. I would take the Sounder train all the way up to Seattle, um, and I would steal there, and then the next morning I'd be back in Puyallup doing it there. And uh, Many of the loss prevention officers um, started to uh, become familiar with me, and uh, I thought that I could, uh, you know, more or less begin to um, intimidate them, um, and I wouldn't allow them to stop me anymore. And actually, that all caught up to me um, because I got really um, arrogant in that, um, and you know, I was also abusing alcohol, so that didn't help that either. So. Um, there was a time that I um, wasn't going to let them stop me, and uh, there was a lady that offered to pay me um, to carry some items out for her um, from a store. And uh, when I got out to the parking lot, she was in the cab of a truck that was full and told me to jump in the back. So I jumped in the back, and uh, we actually got in a high-speed chase, and we made it from uh, Puyallup all the way to Tacoma, and I held on for dear life in the bed of a pickup truck, and uh, that's... You know, that story that you told, uh, that is my life. That is my life. And uh, I also wanted to mention that I actually knew Mark personally. Um, if you grew up downtown Puyallup, the gentleman that passed away, um, I am deeply troubled to hear that he has passed away, and this was uh, the first time that I did hear that. Uh, but, um, you know, being cut from the same cloth, I want you to know that um, there is hope because um, I'm here, standing here today, and uh, with your support and with the support of Absolute Ministries, people like me and people like Mark, unfortunately, he didn't make it. And I'm so sorry to hear that, uh, but I am making it. So thank you so much for, for being here and for supporting us. Awesome. awesome. Thanks for sharing, Josh. Um, similar question to Alyssa's. Out of all the things that we provide at Absolute, what has been valuable and beneficial to you? Um, well, first and foremost, uh, DOC and legal assistance, uh, because um, I had the honor and privilege of um, actually coming straight to Absolute Ministries from Pierce County Jail, and uh, I was facing serious charges after that whole incident, and uh, they showed up to court with me time after time. Tiffany came to court. Uh, Michael was there to write letters for me. Uh, the administrators wrote killer letters for me. Uh, Ken, who works for Absolute Ministries, came to court with me time after time. And uh, those letters and that support made a huge difference in the outcome of this case. And not only that, but I was in a safe place throughout the entirety of that situation. And uh, because of the support that I received here, that turned out um, positive, and it's all behind me now. And now I can uh, move forward. So Awesome. Yeah. And Josh, you just got a new job. I you did. want to tell us a little I bit did. about that? Um, so, uh, as a member of Absolute Ministries, um, a part of your uh, requirements are to find a church of your choosing, get involved at that church, get a mentor at that church. Um, I grew up in church. My mom is a pastor. Um, she's been in full-time ministry most of my life. And uh, it was normal for me. For me, it was just going back to what I knew. So I started serving um, at Motion Church in Puyallup every weekend, every Saturday and Sunday. And uh, I'm a sound guy myself. So I showed up and I just fell in love with it. And through that and through the requirements, it's just crazy, you know, I fell in love with Jesus all over again. And uh, now um, I've had the opportunity to come on to staff at Motion, Motion Church full time um, as the production pastor for the Bonnie Lake campus. And uh, I'm actually living a dream of mine now, um, being in full-time ministry, something I never thought I'd be able to go back to. Um, but because of these people and what they do, and because of you, I've been able to uh, begin to walk that out. And it's truly just been an amazing experience. Amazing. Thank Thanks, you, Josh. Thank you. All right, Kendall. Kendall, can you share with us how long you've been at Absolute? 
Um, I've been in Absolute for two and a half years. Two and a half years. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Kendall, can you share with us a little bit about what your life looked like before recovery? Um, yeah, uh, my life started um, really going crazy at the age of 15. Um, I had an abortion. I lived in a Christian family, and my parents didn't really know how to deal with that, so I was I left home. Um, I ended up getting married um, and just kind of swept that problem under the rug, you know, like it didn't happen. Um, after 13 years of marriage, my husband had cheated on me. We ended up getting divorced, and it was really a bad custody battle. Um, In 2005, I had twins early and lost them at a funeral, February 16th of 2005, five years to the day, February 16th, I had to take my son off life support at Riley's Children's Hospital, he was 16. Our conversation is a mom and a son. Wasn't your normal conversation. It was, what is heaven like? And are you gonna be okay when I'm gone? I drank really heavy meth, heroin, opiates, anything I could get my hands on, just so I didn't have to deal with it. I was ticked off every single day I woke up. A mother's guilt. I couldn't fix it and I couldn't make it better. I went to Teen Challenge, um, graduated from there after a year long program. I wanted to keep going, so I chose Absolute, where I actually got to start living my life. <laughs> the staff is incredible. They will walk next to you, walk by your side, and encourage you when you think you can't do it. With all the tools that they provide you with and all the resources, I'm able to live my life and not just sit on the sidelines and watch people live theirs while I sit. I actually get to live my life. Thank you, Kendall, for sharing. That's good. So, Kendall, what season are you in? Season four. Let's go. So Absolute is made up of seasons, so they go through a workbook, and fourth season is the season where you start transitioning out and working on your plan of what's next, and um, it's been amazing. I picked Kendall up from rehab and drove her from Eugene, Oregon to Absolute Ministries to see you serve and love people the way you do. Kendall also serves three days a week after she gets done with her full-time job. She goes and serves and feeds the homeless. And it's just amazing. Yeah. So, Kendall, you're near the end of your program. What are you excited about in the future? And what has God been stirring inside of you? I'm excited about living my life with new eyes. I get to see everything. I see everything differently. I get to live life. And like I've seen everything for the first time. Everything is new, everything is exciting. And I just wanna live life. Yeah. Well, you're doing it, Kendall. Super proud of all of you. Thank you for sharing. Awesome. Awesome.
Hey, right now, we want to honor, if you have been a mentor in the past or are a current mentor, will you please stand? Awesome. Amazing. And you can stay standing. If you are a graduate of Absolute, alumni, or currently in Absolute Ministries, will you please stand? you. Awesome. And if you are still sitting, but you've been impacted by one of the individuals or multiple that are standing, will you please stand? Awesome. Amazing. Come on, is there a little bit of excitement that we don't serve a dead God, but we serve a God that's alive and is transforming lives? Yeah, so amazing. Good. That's awesome. All right, you guys, thank you for coming up. You guys did amazing. I'm going to invite Chris Knight up. Yeah. And then I'll give it right back to you. So there's 15 minutes left for the um, bidding, and it literally ends. Cameron can't stop this train. It closes at 8. So we wanted to give you a minute to pull out your phones. Sure, you can check something else if you're not going to bid. But every dollar that you spend goes to, like, that matching program. It just doesn't, like, the bank doesn't give it to them. Like, d dollars that come from donors give it to them. So if you don't know how to get there, pull out your phone. If you have a flip phone, you got to use your neighbors. There's just no, I can't help you. And you're going to uh, do the, the picture thing. You're going to click it. It took me a second. And, you know, I kind of know how to work an iPhone. So then go to the menu hit browse items, then hit the item you want and bid. I still see the horse trail ride for two is $110. That is still optional. Uh, then there's a degree from the university that Cameron mentioned. And I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, $5,000 starting bid for a master's or bachelor's degree. That sounds fake, but it's not. That is real. So go get, you have to do the classes. They don't give you the degree. <laughs> What were we paying for? <laughs> Every dollar goes to Absolute, goes to helping these students, uh, these members, not students, these members, and more. I mean, so many more. So pull that open. It has 13 minutes left. Bid on something. Hopefully you win it. At 8 o'clock, you'll be notified. All right, everybody, we're going to name off the dessert dash winner. So does everybody have their runner who's going to get the desserts picked out? All right. Can I just say one thing? What a house of miracles right now. All of those stories are so amazing. Yeah. God is doing miracles yeah. he is transforming lives and it is just so amazing yeah wow i just can't even believe that yeah oh my amazing. gosh yes okay are we ready for yes. the time that you guys Who's ready for yeah. dessert Woo! the moment you've all been okay for. so we're gonna count off the first few really slow give you a little time after that we're gonna start going faster so make sure that you're gonna dash to either side of the room yes. and get your dessert. All yes. right. All right. The first table, the number one is six. Number six. Go, 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 Megan. Go, Megan. All right. All right. The next table is number 36. Woo! Number 36? Yep, I think they're running right there. Oh, there they are. Hi, 36. I see you. I see you. You can pick anyone you want. Anyone at any of these tables. Grab it. Okay. Okay, here we go. Number seven. Do it. Go, go Bowman. <laughs> Run. 64. 31. 35. 17. Go. 65. 10. 
Table 10. Oh my gosh, Bowman got the best one. Table 60. Table 29. No. Table 12. All right, table number nine. Number nine. 19. Gina, number nine. <laughs> number 11. 25. Table five. Whoa, it's Flash. We got Flash in the building. Number, did you say number five? 42. 43. 49. 32. 14. 41. 20. 28. 27. 34. Table number one. It's your chance. Go ahead. Table four. 18. 57. Where is 57? Table number eight. Chair Brian Combs. Can we give him a hand? How is everybody doing this evening? I have a delicious looking chocolate chip cookie waiting for me, so I'll try and be quick. My name is Brian Combs, and I am the chairman of the board for Absolute Ministries. On behalf of the board of directors who are all here, we just want to thank you for coming this evening. It's great to be back in person, and we love having you here. Uh, so I get the pleasure and honor of talking about finances this evening. Yeah, that'd be great. Everyone listen up. 
finances, very important. I'll be quick and I'll try to put you to sleep. So one of our primary roles of the Board of Directors is to uh, oversight and responsibility for the ministry and to watch the finances and help make sure we're being transparent. So I'm gonna give you a very brief overview of our finances for this year so you can understand where the money's going and how we as a ministry bring money in. So if I can get the next slide, please. Ooh. It's a big pie chart. It took me a while to remember how to do these. So behind me is the big pie chart of how Absolute makes our money and how we can run this wonderful ministry. The biggest one there, 49%, is raised by the members' tuition. Now that is a huge number and we appreciate that they are all in and you can see it. So for each dollar the members bring in, we need to raise a dollar to help run the ministry. And the biggest portion of that is 26% of you are monthly partners. Many of you are those monthly partners and that is a huge help to our ministry and we truly appreciate your giving there. The next big one is 11 and 13. 11 is fundraisers like this one. So this banquet and other fundraisers throughout the year cover 11% of our budget. And a new piece of the pie this year is grants. We are really working to go after grants. There's a lot of money available for organizations like ours who are helping our communities get better and help people who need help. So we are working hard to bring in those dollars to help the ministry thrive. And then we have a, a miscellaneous income, donated goods and things that we sell throughout the year. And now I'm gonna talk about how we use those funds. So if I get the next slide, please. The final graph. So 73% of the money we bring goes straight to program operations, and that is our six fantastic facilities, cars for members to get to and from work, um, our on-site staff to make it all happen that you've all got to meet tonight. 16%, uh, the blue one, is administration. We have a great administrative team who covers everything and keeps the ministry running, so we really appreciate them. Let's give our administrators a big hand of applause. That is a job that we appreciate so much and it's needed. 9% uh, goes straight to marketing. We send out staff members, you heard a couple stories of us going and picking up members or speaking at their rehab facility so they could learn about Absolute being the next step. So we put money towards that to tell people who we are and why they should come to us next. And then the final 2% is just the emergency savings. Something's gonna happen at a facility. We're gonna have a heater go out or a hot water tank break so we have the money available to quickly fix those problems and keep our members happy and healthy at our facilities so in closing you know I, I would be amiss if I didn't plug volunteering I know there's at least five of you who are really on the fence about volunteering we'd love to have you whether that's a mentor like we just learned about that is one of the best things for our ministry and we could really use you if you love running events or helping an event like this one that'd be great or even if you're interested in being a board member Please come find a staff member. Come find me or one of the board members. We'd love to talk to you. I introduced myself to Cameron many years ago now, and I'm glad I did. So thank you all for being here. We really appreciate it. I have two additional pie charts for you. Just kidding. Just kidding. You graduated from that. Well done. How did the, the dash thing work? Do you have desserts? Okay. Good. It's bonding you. There are two minutes and 47 seconds left for the bidding. So the horse trail ride got bid on, it's up to 150. The trailer, 1,310, brand new five by eight Eagle Utility. Half Lion, all exclusive dinner, exclu inclusive, different word. There's two horse trail rides, the next one's at 170. Six day, seven night Winthrop cabin, 580. That's a steal. I, I mean, should we, we'll talk, well we got two minutes to talk about it. All right, well, Keep bidding on that, you have two minutes and 15 seconds, but now um, someone I'd love to honor, and can we invite up Cameron Burke, the founder, the president, the CEO, can we all applaud him? Thanks, Chris. Wow, what a night so far. Thank you so much for coming out. Can you give, your hand, give yourselves a hand, round of applause, please? We've got to uh, honor some individuals and companies that made tonight happen. And um, it's a list. Um, so I've got some sponsors and some families to honor. Advanced Electric and Security, thank you for your sponsorship. The Wiseheart family, I think they're watching online tonight, out of state. The Rickabaugh Pentecost Construction family, the Huntington family, 
DNA Designs, the Wagner family, R&J Construction. I think I saw some of them here tonight. Yeah. The Norwood family, Oak Harbor Freight, the Half Lion Public House and Restaurant, Inspired Development, Pinnacle Investigations. They're over in the Coeur d'Alene area. We're going to talk about that. Crux Commercial, Faith International University. I think the president is here tonight. Is he here? Where is he at? He's over here. Dr. Adams. Yep. Thank you for being here. Innovations in Leadership, Nordley's Family Dentistry. The doctor is in the house tonight. Prospect Construction, Bjornstad Construction Supply, Torklift International up there in Kent, Barry Family Chiropractic, Faith and Victory Church, and Idaho Family Dental. Give them a hand. Okay, so look, um, as you've heard the members talk about tonight, the staff is what makes this go. Okay, this is not a light, clock in, clock out job, okay? This is a lifestyle. And so next, I wanna honor our staff who has dedicated a lifestyle to these individuals. And a lot of our staff, I'm gonna go through it here in a second, they are alumni of the organization. That's a beautiful piece about what's going on. Friends, we have a pipeline built in, all right? When your life is transformed and you experience that transformation, what do you want to do? Man, you're full of gratitude and you want to give it away again. And that's what's going on. So, my beautiful wife, Amy Burke, she's right there. Kendra Shadle, our business administrator, she's here somewhere, probably in charge of something. There she is back there. And her husband, Dane. Jacqueline Casme and her husband, Kurt, are here. And... Uh, she's an administrator also. Our, yep, give her a hand. The operations staff. Uh, so we've got Tiffany Betancourt, our VP of Pacific Northwest Operations, and, and her husband, Jason. Michael. That's, yeah. Michael Bowles and... and his wife, Lauren. They are on site. Yep, they are on site staff up in Lake Taps with three duplexes up there. Um, and we've got Ken Salazar and Kylie Salazar. You, you see what happened there. They are both alumni. Yep. Carolyn Kassendorf, she's alumni. You've seen her. Her and Kylie run the women's campuses. Matthew Claxton, he's also alumni. He's CDA, Coeur d'Alene staff. And Bowman Kriego and his wife, they just got married. Jen, they're over in CDA on staff also. Give them a hand. And of course, Tim Nelson, our amazing intern, Tim Nelson. He's an alumni and, yep. What they do every single day is nothing short of supernatural, really. When you think, when you listen to uh, Detective Jeremy talk, right, about the gravity of what's going on, and we see it. Friends, this is not something that is lost on any of us. We, you drive down any street and you see it, right? And you look at the faces. It's hard to actually imagine that the people that stood up here tonight are the same people because of the transformation that has happened. It is nothing short of miraculous. And the staff makes it happen. It is a big deal. You guys need to stand up one more time. Where's the staff at? Stand up really quick, right where you're at. I know there are also people here in this room who have had positive interactions with recovery, and there are some who've had heartbreaking loss 
and grief. And both groups are here tonight. One decision gets made, right? We heard. Six out of 10, lethal, right? One decision gets made and it alters a family's life. It alters a family's life. It alters generations and those left behind forever. And it's important that you hear me say that we see you, we value you, and we love you. Yeah. This is our first year back from COVID. This is our first year back. We're in person. You're not looking at a screen this year. Give a round of applause for that. For real. And we took a risk, you know. This is, uh, it's our first year with an out-of-state out of keynote, right? I'm, I had to drive like five hours to get here for this event. Um, and, you know, I'll own it. You know, I'll own it. If, when, 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 God wants to say something, and he's, like, moving us on, right, out of state. Like, when, I mean, I'm sure he speaks to you guys, too, right? Like, you can, if you have an idea, you know, we don't have to go through something like COVID again for Absolute to go to another state and start again. I think it'd be, you know, you just let us know, like, hey, you should maybe go over there. I was just owning that. Um, friends, when you have ideas, we need to hear them. You're full of good ideas. And... In all seriousness, we are growing and it's expanding, and it's amazing to see. To meet people in a new state, to meet people in a new state, and they come up to us and they say, you are the answer to our prayers. Because God works through people. Where does he reside right now, right? He lives in us as believers, and he works through people. And so when we were getting ready to leave my family from here and transplant into Coeur d'Alene area, we didn't know. We just heard the voice of God over and over and over, and we're like, this doesn't make a lot of sense. I don't quite understand it until we got there. And we had these individuals and these families say, my son's been through rehab eight times and it's nearly bankrupted our family. And now you're here and he's in absolute and he's learning how to live. Absolute is of faith and function. You've heard a lot of talk tonight about faith and it is vital, it's instrumental, it's crucial. But coupled with that, is also function, right? You've probably read that if you've read your Bible, faith and works, right? Function, the function side of it being walked out and us walking shoulder to shoulder with individuals is what makes this go. And when we introduce godly perspective for these individuals and help them learn to think in a new way, right? Whatever's going on, you look at the list of things that we walk alongside them in, everything that's going on in their life, we're having conversations at the exact same time. How many times Josh was taken to court, right? They talk the whole way. He's being infused with God's perspective every step of the way as they're doing life. And individuals are receiving limited structure. You see, spiritual life or spiritual awakening doesn't automatically equate to a permanent trajectory change. Let me explain that. An individual can come to saving knowledge of Jesus, right? And then make a mistake, right? 
And where do they go for 40 years, right? In, to the jail system, in the legal system. Spiritual life doesn't automatically equate to success. And we're pairing those things together. That's what's going on. The old operating system in somebody's mind has to be renewed. A new way of thinking is happening through repetitive training. Our workbook is four seasons. You've heard that tonight. Each season contains 12 benchmarks in the five areas of life. And if you don't hear anything else, I want you to hear this. The reason recidivism rates are off the chart, right? Nine out of 10 individuals that complete a drug and alcohol rehab program will be in need of that program again, 90%. Okay, that's straight from Samsha. The reason that is going on is because what I call the 80% rule, the four out of five rule, and you see these uh, job placement, transportation, safe and stable housing, financial framework, that list. If an individual is doing well in four of those areas, and that would be miraculous, but they lose their job. Right? Or they, they don't know how to manage their money, which most of the time they don't. Right? If the other areas were doing well and one area, 20%, falters, guess what happens? All the other dominoes fall. It's not even a question. It's automatic. And that is why what we are doing is powerful and working. Because we're we're in a comprehensive manner, holistically walking with these individuals at the same time through all five areas um, in, in, in unison. And that's why this is working functionally, paired with their new faith in Christ and their desire, new motive. That's what it is. It's a new motive for living. It's a new reason for living. The system is overloaded because the system isn't working. And we're all witness to the system not working. It's back to that 9 out of 10 failure statistic out of rehab programs. But this organization and the staff that make it go and you that give and fund it, an extension of the local church for the most part, are making it go. And I think that is what the Bible talks about, right? You are impacting your cities by funding individuals walking alongside other individuals in real life. We are taking rehab grads and showing them how to live. And we're out of space. We're out of space. Good problem. But... I know our women's campus is full, and we've got apps on our desk um, that speak for the beds that are currently, like right now, empty. Um, they're spoken for. And you see the Harlins, right? The six-year-old on stage here. We're out of space, and there's more. And individuals do not have a place to go that offers these services. I've looked. I've looked. I'm like, is anybody else doing this? I've yet to find anything that's offering all these vital services at the same time. And you've heard them say they've been with us two years. It's real life. Am I making sense? It's real life. There's no need to hurry through it. But we don't hold anybody back either. People have done the program in as little as 10 months. And some people have taken three years because they had more stuff to walk through. It's not time-based, it's progress-based through the Seasons Workbook. Our model can be duplicated anywhere, and that's what's going on in Kalispell, Montana, and Whitefish, Montana. They took our model through that uh, social franchise, and turnkey, they've opened, they filled the house, they're doing the exact same workbook, and then they got full, and so they opened another one in Whitefish, a little bit north. Yeah. The, 
the model exists in that package. And it can be done anywhere there's willing people that want to walk alongside others. When new motive for life is birthed, it must be coupled with limited structure. There's a Bible verse, and it just popped through my mind, and it says something about with your weak, tired knees, mark out a straight path for yourself so that you can walk along it, right? And that's what we're doing. That's what this, that's what this people group is, and I'm one of them. And you saw all the staff, like they're, they've, they've walked it out as well, right? And they are, like Carolyn, who is up here, um, she's an alumni. You already heard Ken and Kylie, they're alumni. Matthew's alumni. It's not individuals who don't know what it's like. Like, hey, you should do this. Like, try it. You know, I, the workbook says it'll work. They're like, no, I'm, it's me. And so it can work for you too. That's powerful. We are showing these people who've demonstrated resolve and desire how to live. And after they complete a rehab program, they are being shown how to thrive. You know, there's a, in my last minute here, there's a common denominator among individuals in all recovery programs that I've gone to. And whether it's a faith-based program, one centered on the gospel, or a secular one that's a medical model, the people that are in there generally, it's a generalization, there's always exceptions, but there's a lack of discipline. There's a lack of ability to do what is hard in the moment to arrive at the place that you actually want to go in life, right? And that is what we are doing with these individuals. And they get up in the morning, and they get in the car, we drive them to work, right? Oh, man, I'm having a problem with my boss. All right, what are you gonna do about it? Talk about it with them, right? Pick them up in the afternoon, bring them back home. How was it? Oh, I didn't get a chance today. Okay, tomorrow. Real life, taking them to doctor's appointments, taking them to court, all the things. Resistance, that's a form of resistance. You know, we don't like resistance. We're like, ah, I like just, you know, let me say it this way. You like the gym, right? You go to the gym. What do you do at the gym? You put weights on the bar, right? How would your muscles grow if you didn't put weight on the bar? Not so good, right? You put weight on the bar, you have a spotter, you have a trainer who sits there with you so that you can put up the maximum amount so you can arrive at the place you want to be in your physical health. That's what we're doing on an emotional level with these individuals. The new way of thinking is being developed and they are pushing the real weight of life the tuition that they pay every month is common or close to common. It's right in between, it's area specific, but it's right in between what somebody would pay for a room and also like an apartment. So here it's $1,200 a month. That might surprise some of you. But what service are we actually providing individuals if we gave them just a handout? Like, hey, you know, we'll just cover it for you. How does that provide any resistance so that when Renee leaves with Harlan, right? She can actually walk out real life. Now she's been paying that, right? Over and over and over and has orchestrated her life in a way so that when she leaves, the only thing that's going to change, she's not gonna move into an apartment, it's gonna be a shock, right? Oh my, I have not orchestrated my life. I don't know how, this is not gonna work and the dominoes fall. But now she's gotten strong enough, right? More than strong enough to walk it out. And we do this over and over and over. And it's my honor to work at Absolute Ministries. And I wanna thank you all again for being here tonight. 
I hope that I get to meet all of you tonight. You're welcome to hang out and, um, and visit. I've, you know, in recent years, uh, developed a relationship and a friendship with Dean Johnson. He's the mayor of Puyallup, and um, I'm excited and appreciative of you being here tonight. And so it's my honor to welcome Mayor Dean Johnson of the city of Puyallup to the stage. Good evening. My name is Dean Johnson, and I have the honor to serve uh, as the mayor for the city of Puyallup. And I want to welcome every one of you here who are here tonight to support and expand this crucial lifeline referred to as Absolute Ministries. Let me state this for the record I believe in God and in his son, Jesus Christ. And he is all-powerful, all-knowing, and is the source of every living and created thing that exists throughout all eternity and time. I also believe that when God, in his sovereign will, decides to call someone, no matter what condition they're in, whether it be in the lowly of depths or the highest of highs, when God in his sovereign wills decides to call, there is nobody on earth and no one that can stop his will and his call on lives. Several months ago, there was a group of faith-based leaders in the city of Puyallup that decided they want to gather together once every week. And we want to pray specifically and exclusively for God to bring forth a great awakening in order to transform the lives of people who are hurting in many aspects of their life. And every Wednesday morning at 8 a.m., there's a group of people coming, and we're not going to pray for Aunt Susie or Uncle Joe, Job, or, or get a job, anything. We're here to be focused specifically and intentionally to pray for an awakening in the lives of people from Jesus. You see, an awakening is the thermonuclear option. When the awakening comes, it levels everything. All the strongholds are, are, are eliminated. Eyes can see, minds are opened up, hearts can receive, and it goes beyond our capacity to be able to handle that. We can't do it. This needs a supernatural thing from Jesus, the creator of all things, to bring that awakening in the lives of those who are hurting, including us. Tonight, I'm calling each and every one of you right now, in this place, in this moment, in this time, this is a call to action. I want to honor Cameron for what you're doing here. Thank you for that. God called you to this, and you're being obedient to that. Thank you for that. But I want to honor someone else who oftentimes is behind the scenes under the radar. And I happened to notice it when I looked in her eyes, his wife, Amy, amazing. Woo! Thank you for what you do. Woo! All the staff and the board and the sponsors, the volunteers, I think it's safe to say this, if I were to take some artistic liberty on behalf of Jesus' heart, he would say thank you. Thank you. I believe he would say that, and I think he's saying it now. You know, we talked about a personal trainer or working out earlier. Tonight, I'm your personal trainer. I'm your financial personal trainer. 
You came to lift tonight and to donate, and I'm going to ask you to add some more weight to those bars. Whatever amount that you planned on giving, I'm going to ask you to stretch that and multiply it to a greater degree. You had an amount in mind, I'm asking you now to, to take it up another level, and another level, and another level. You can't take it with you, but right now it can be used for good. I heard, I heard that our goal is to reach $150,000. I want to see tonight be a record breaker. We exceed $150,000 tonight. I believe by faith, with, our, with your help, God's inspiration on us, we can do that in Jesus' name. The drug epidemic is not only a substance abuse epidemic, but in addition, it's the manifestation resulting from intense pain, suffering, and hurt that men, women, and children have experienced from someone or from many people who have abused them, either emotionally, physically, spiritually, or perhaps all of the above. Unfortunately, to deal with their pain, they thought that substance would numb or take away or heal their hurt. But it doesn't. In fact, it further hurts and it ends up tormenting them. Satan is a liar. He's a thief. He's a fraud. But Jesus is the truth and the life and the redeemer and the savior and the creator of all things. And he's more powerful to deliver from those who are in bondage and addiction. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, people are hurting. And I'm absolutely convinced, without a shadow of a doubt, that if God were to peel back the layers of our dimmed mind's eye, that we would immediately be aware that people all around us are hurting at levels of which we cannot even begin to imagine. Hurting co-workers, neighbors, spouses, marriages, families, and children. Crime and substance abuse is at an all-time high. Countless millions of children, men and women, are suffering and in bondage to things that have them trapped in a seemingly endless spiral of deception, depression, abuse, addictions, pain, anger, greed, violence, hopelessness, and blinded to the truth of God's word. We all need a widespread awakening, not just an awakening for them, but also an awakening for us. As I hold the mirror up to my own life, I ask myself, Jesus, what am I not seeing that you want me to see? You see, it's easy to focus on those that obviously are hurting and say, what's wrong with them? How's it going on? But what does Jesus want to reveal in us that we need an awakening? In terms of addiction, I understand this. In my family lineage, we have, we, we've been raised in Christ, but we're not exempt from the rain that falls on the just and the unjust. My little brother at 25 years old Decided to go out drinking, got drunk, hit a telephone pole, and died instantly at 25 years old. Game over. My other little brother, currently as we speak, is about, he's down to about 90 pounds. Jeremiah Ezekiel Johnson. His life is being destroyed by the torment of drugs. He's been offered rehab, but he's so trapped he can't even get out. Doesn't even want out. Even though his inner soul is asking and crying for it but the bondage is strong and the drugs are real. But Jesus is more real. Many centuries ago, there was a man you might remember, his name was Moses. And he said to this Pharaoh who had the people in bondage, and this was his quote according to the scriptures. He said to Pharaoh, God told me that you are to let my people go. Fast forward thousands of years later to this present moment in time, 
and in this place, we need to speak through prayer to those strongholds who are holding people in suffering, deception, and bondage and say, let God's people go in Jesus' name. How can I help you? I said there's a group meeting in Puyallup who are praying for the city of Puyallup for an awakening to happen. I want to see a group of people praying in every city in, throughout Pierce County, King County, Snohomish County, Thurston County, the state of Washington and beyond. If I can help you in any way, my phone number is on the screen if we have it. Is it up there? There it is. That's my personal number, 253-224-6390. You can text or call me. If I can help encourage you in any way to start a prayer group in your city, I want to help do it because I want to see Jesus move and do an awakening in the lives of people. I believe there's a destiny and a purpose in a name. And I believe the meaning of the name has a purpose and a destiny. When we look back at the book of Genesis and God created, he called things by name. And he charged Adam and Eve to name the plants and the animals. But when we study the name, we see something very revealing. And I want to study a particular name right now. Absolute Ministries, by its very definition, is a reflection of a flat-out miracle. What does absolute mean? Absolute means this by definition in the Webster's. It means free from imperfection. It means complete. It means perfect. It means free from restriction or limitation. It means someone who is not dependent upon external conditions for their existence. In Christ Jesus, absolute ministries brings people to perfection in Christ, to freedom from restrictions, to freedom and being complete in Jesus' name. That is the definition of its name, and therefore they're fulfilling it through Jesus. You see, tonight, when you give generously, and as a financial personal trainer, I'm asking you to stretch, put more weight on those bars and give, because you're giving to a miracle, and more miracles, and more miracles, and putting all your resources to change lives is valuable and worthy the investment of those who have been called to give stewards of. We want to give a return for Jesus, and this is a great miracle. May Jesus bring forth a widespread awakening, not just in their lives, but in your life and in my life. May he show us what we cannot see. May there be a widespread awakening that all of a sudden one day we wake up and we see countless thousands of people with nothing that happened through a program, with nothing that happened to an altar call, but simply one morning thousands of people wake up and say, I don't think that way anymore. I don't believe that way anymore. And we come to an awakening and come to their senses. And that can happen as we contend in prayer relentlessly, never giving up. And we contend and we do not give up like that, that relentless widow that would not leave until she was granted that request. Jesus, we will not relent. We will continue to pray until you bring forth the, the set free, the awakening for lives and the lives of men, women, and children. God bless you. So to honor your time, quickly, this card is where you're going to indicate your giving. It's also where you're going to indicate your dessert dash giving. So if you remember, you put down $500 or 50 or whatever it was, you're going to hit other or ch check other and write down that quantity because this is where you can put down your financial information for that to actually be transferred over. 
And you can do both. You can do a one-time gift or monthly gift and your Dessert Dash gift on this. Brian and Mandy, why don't you guys come up? They're going to give us a different live song and give you guys an opportunity. And then all those go in these brown uh, manila envelopes right on your table. And then these two white buckets. Megan, can you give me those? I'm going to put them on the stage. Boom. You'll take your envelope. Okay. You'll put it in there. I'll spread those out. You can do that now or in the next 20 minutes. The, the event's, you know, about to wrap up. So just obviously before you head out. But take a moment, and then everyone at the table is going to use that same envelope. How y'all doing tonight? Amen. Amen. Man, Dean Johnson brought the heat just now, didn't he? Are you guys inspired or what? Sheesh. Man, I'm inspired. I just wanna, I just wanna take this moment to uh, just honor Cameron, honor the staff, and uh, just tell the brothers and sisters in the program, I love you guys. Uh, staff, we love you. Uh, we thank you for doing everything that you're doing. Not only do they walk with us to our victories, they're not afraid to hop in the flames with us because who knows, God likes to turn up the heat a little bit. And they're not afraid to hop in the flames and get, get torched a little bit themselves along the way. So God bless you guys. Thank you guys so much. This is, uh, this is my friend Mandy. My name's Brian Morales. We have a song we wanna share with you guys that we wrote together. It's called Hallelujah Song. Let me tell you about the grace that came and saved the kid While he chased the things that tried to take my life, he gave up his Let me tell you about the joy of my salvation Every day, Sunday, so the holy fire stayed lit They wonder why we face the flames with smiles upon our faces Cause we know we strengthened by the testing of our patience Living in my flesh, a hey, that was catastrophic I used to clothe myself in death, you know I had to stop it Now I'm clothed in righteousness, the blood of Christ upon me Jesus, he my cornerstone, you know I got to keep it rocking Full surrender, that's the formula Unclench your fist from around the secrets that the devil used to torment you. Come hit my line, I'll grab my sword and go to war with you. This love without conditions puts the enemy in forfeiture. Yeah. I said this love without conditions puts the enemy in forfeiture. Yeah.
That wraps up our evening. Thanks for coming out, sacrificing, and caring about Absolute. If it was, like I said earlier, your first exposure to Absolute, thanks for learning. And if you're, uh, you know, all the way involved, the time is now. The time is now to keep our pedal to the gas by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of Jesus. If you haven't turned in your envelopes, please do that. Last thing, if you did win one of the silent auctions, congratulations, you should have been notified on your phone. If you weren't, but you thought you won, Check your bid and then check on the app if that was you. Anyways, you're going to find people, Kendra and Carolyn. Can you stand up and be like, that's me, Kara, Kendra and Carolyn? Because they need to find you in the lobby. They're probably already out there. Is that accurate? So you need to, you need to just ask where Kendra and Carolyn are. That's very vague, but they're going to help you get your Puget Sound ride and horseback ride and all those things. Thank you for bidding. Thank you for every dollar. You'll be notified uh, how tonight went as far as, you know, reaching our goal, etc. But with that, like Cameron said earlier, he wanted me to tell you to hang out uh, and meet someone new, hang out and go to the merch booth, pray about your giving more, meet someone new, say, hey, how'd you, uh, how'd you get connected with Absolute? If you don't know who to talk to, Jordan and Josh are my two guys. I said, be available. They're Absolute members that will just entertain anyone. With that, guys, have a great evening. Praise Jesus, and thanks for coming out. Envelopes. Envelopes right here. <laughs>